Hello. How are you today? Are we live? Yes, we're live. How are you? I don't know what uh, is happening, but this is D and D news. How is everyone going today? I am your humble host, Greg Tito, here for an entire hour, coming at you as we uh, transition from Dragon Plus, which you just uh, saw here on the channel with Bart Carroll uh, speaking to the Waffle Crew, in addition to Mr. Chris Perkins. They will be back in that exact same studio playing live with each other uh, at 4 p.m. So I am now here. Uh, usually I come on at 3.30, but it being uh, always a lot of content that I try to cram into 30 minutes. And uh, you know, I was originally only supposed to go up to 55 to give the transition into Dice Camera Action plenty of time, but uh, I always ran out of air to say all the things that are happening in Dungeons and Dragons world right now. So uh, we're uh, you know, bumping this up to a full hour or at least a full 50 minutes uh, to talk to you guys and uh, uh, let you know everything that's happening because this fall has got a lot of Dungeons and Dragons stuff happening. I've been holding this mug here uh, ready to take a, a, a sip uh, uh, for a while now. So I'm going to do it so I get nice, good, and caffeinated for everything that's about to come. Mmm. Yes, the Tito Fun Hour. That's what I, I I was pushing for Mike Merles to call it the Mike Merles Happy Fun Hour for a long time, and I might just be taking that back. You never know. You never know what's going to occur. Uh, yes, that's right, New Fantasy. We did change it up this time around, and it will be that way going forward. Uh, because, like I said, an hour is uh, about right for all of the things that need to pop out of my brain into the camera and broadcast out to you all over town. How's the sound? Is everything uh, okay sound-wise for you guys? Uh, we are operating without Pelham Green here in the studio. Uh, not feeling uh, too well, uh, but we wanted to make sure we're doing this as best as we can with the... I'm going to continue to hold this right here because I need to take more. Mm. More sips uh, out there. I know, right? I'm sorry, Wrench Double Six. I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you with that cup that needs to come out there. Uh, but that's that's what that's what I do. That's one of my jobs here at Wizards of the Coast is to make sure you know about all the fun Dungeons and Dragons things that are just at the tip of our fingertips, tips of our tongues, tips of our lips coming out there. Mandabar, can you handle a whole hour? That remains to be seen. I don't know if you can, but I think you can. I think I think you'll be good. I think you'll be good there. Hey, what's up, Elwarius? I just saw your, uh, your 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 fist in the air there. That's good stuff. Way to combine emotes. I'm liking that a lot. Uh, hope you are doing good down in Mexico way. Uh, and uh, yeah, look at I, I got. I'm, I'm looking at what you guys are all saying here. Um, yeah, Sans Engineer. I'm doing it by myself. Yeah, Sean is doing the uh, <laughs> the white text exactly. It should be fun for all to see. But I'm gonna get through uh, some of what's going on uh, for you guys. Um, in the Dungeons and Dragons world. So uh, let's talk about what's coming up today because there's two things that released today. Uh, those are the Endless Quest books. I have been showing you guys images of these for a long time, but I get to show you them in person now. This is a hardcover edition of To Catch a Thief. Uh, this is a, uh, I call it a young adult choose your own adventure book called Endless Quest. There's going to be four of them out in bookstores right now. They were all written by Matt Forbeck. We're going to have him on Dragon Plus actually next Monday. Uh, and there's four for each of the major uh, character classes that you can choose in uh, basic Dungeons and Dragons, basically. Um, but yeah, this one's uh, set in Waterdeep. Uh, you go through uh, the things and it's like, oh, to bluff your way out, turn to page six. And then you would go to page six and kind of see what happens there. It's got tons of artwork from uh, uh, you, you may recognize, as well as some, some newer stuff you may not recognize. Uh, some really great, uh, 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 what's it called? Graphic design, that's the word I'm looking for uh, in these books. Uh, they really do feel like Dungeons and Dragons uh, uh, production quality in here, and I love them. Ooh, I like this, this image too. Um, so this one is the To Catch a Thief, as I said, in which you will play as the rogue. Here is another one. Escape the Underdark, uh, which is a fighter 
Um, and uh, the main character there has to get out from the Underdark. And then, of course, a lot of the artwork is, is Underdark themed. Here is an egg. What's in that egg? I don't know. I'd have to read it all about it, but I'm pretty sure it's not good. Uh, it might have to do with Gracklestug and all that's, that's happening there. Uh, out of the Abyss, I'm not going to lie, was always my favorite. Uh, oh, hey, look. That dragon looks looks uh, looks very nice. Is that is that Clouth? Could be Clouth. It looks very similar to the dragon uh, that's depicted on my shirt right here. I keep looking down at my shirt. Ta -da -da. Good stuff. Um, yeah, so this one is, as I said, the fighter one. It's all about escaping the Underdark, and uh, it is great. These are the hardcover versions, uh, so they're extra fancy. Um, I wanted to show you the wizard. Uh, look at this. Dun, 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 dun. Wizard campaign against the giants. Big Trouble. Uh, it has to do with giants, so they said Big Trouble. Get it? See? Matt Forbeck. He knows he knows how to write books. Um, I love this uh, one as well because it has a uh, elfy type person on there. I don't think it's actually... Uh, or is it an elf? It might actually be. You are an elf wizard whose home in our deep forest has been destroyed by giants. What move will you make? I don't know. Uh, I'd say you should kick that guy in the butt. What do you think? I think so too. He does not look very nice. Uh, there's a griffin. Everybody loves griffins. Or it's a rock. I don't know. Story time with Greg Tito. Yeah, maybe that's what I should do on uh, future D&D uh, &D news is, is just read through a couple of things and let you guys choose through a, a, a show of hands what you think I should do. Uh, but that, that seems like a fun segment and that uh, I can't go wrong. Uh, there is one final one. What I, yeah, you're right, uh, Lauren. It was totally a rock. R-O-C. Not R O C K. Little Adam Sandler joke for you. Uh, all right, so this one is the cleric one. The Harpers have lost one of their own, a legendary adventurer named Artis Simber. Oh, dice camera action fans, you might know uh, a little bit about Artis Simber and his family, as the case may be. Um, they've hired you to travel to the jungle clad land of Chult and find him. If only you can manage it before the frost giants hunting for him do, and before the zombies that infest the land get you. Welcome to the jungle. Hey, that was my, that was my catchphrase uh, for the uh, out of the abyss, not the out of the abyss, the uh, tomb of annihilation storyline. Uh, Welcome to the jungle. So uh, props to uh, the folks who put these together, and I love that these are very clearly branded as Dungeons and Dragons books. Uh, they're not a lot of other. Uh, uh, Brands or, or accoutrements on there, although it is published by Candlewick, uh, one of our partners there. They also made the Dungeonology book, uh, also written by Matt Forbeck, if you uh, remember all that. So, yes, these are all out now. I hope you pick them up uh, for, or at least one of them up for, the folks on your reading list. Uh, school is starting. I know my kids are got their first day of school tomorrow, uh, while other parts of the country, notably the East Coast, have already started uh, school, but it's a great way to get folks both into what's happening in Dungeons and Dragons as well as uh, practice their reading skills because they get to make the choice. They get to decide what to do in any given moment, uh, and it gets them ready to think about that for Dungeons and Dragons games going forward. Uh, so also out today, and I don't have uh, but I am going to find out about it. Timeless is out today. What is that, you ask? It is the next Drist novel uh, as written by Mr. R.A. Salvatore, uh, who we refer to as Bob uh, around these parts. He is a fantastic writer, and he has written a another entry into the amazing Legend of Drist Storyline. I think there's 30 plus books, uh, all focusing on those characters: the camp, uh, the companions, Zach Nefane, Jarl Axel, uh, and uh, the, the the newest one is called The Timeless. And as I said, it is out today, so you can pick it up wherever you find books. It's also available uh, on Audible, things like that. I uh, can't wait to find out more about this book. We're also going to be talking to Bob on Dragon Talk next Monday. Uh, so we got two authors on the docket: Matt Forbeck. Uh, Bob Salvatore, and uh, uh, that should be a lot of fun. I can't wait for that. So we'll find out way more about it there. Um, but if you are a fan of uh, Drist and everything that's been going on in the Forgotten Realms, as told by Bob Salvatore, you should pick up uh, this book right away. I am definitely going to now get the audiobook of it uh, because I get to read a lot more when they're being talked at me. So I think it would be pretty cool. 
And uh, I don't have an image for that, but I should have thought ahead. Let me see if I can actually get an image up for you guys for that. Um, how are you going? Are you guys are you guys just fans? Have you guys uh, read Amanda Bar? Is he Bob still going? Yes, it is worthwhile to go back and read them from the start for sure. Have you have you read them all, Amanda Bar? Um, because if so, you are my hero. You can be my hero. Uh, oh, I just realized that you're actually seeing my my thing on there. Whoopsie. Ha, ha, ha. I wish I had another screen I could drag that onto, uh, but I shan't. I usually open all those up ahead of time, and I didn't get a chance to do that today. So you are going to have to add, you're going to, you know, you're going to see some file names going up over there. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Executive Hollow, I am good. Well, that's good. That's good for you. I think that's cool. Mm. Yeah, I really should have opened those all up ahead of time. Um, so what else do I want to tell you about that's going on in Dungeons and Dragons world? Uh, so, uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. You may know about that, that here book. Um, it is right here. We actually have a physical copy in our hands for you to see. I'm going to put it over here so you can see it even better. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on a delay. I'm actually, oh, it is better actually if it's over here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, one thing I wanted to show you was, and uh, you get to see me do it in, 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 in real time, uh, but there is a map back here. Oh, and Sean is trying to, Sean is trying to do this real time. So I apologize, Sean. Sorry, Sean. You can hear me. <laughs> Uh, but you're gonna see me pull this in real time. I'm gonna pull out this map so that you can check it out. Uh, uh, yes, that's it. It is now free. And this is a poster map that comes with every single copy of Waterdeep Dragon Heist. And I'm just dropping it and ruining it for everyone to see. Uh, so this is it in all of its glory. Uh, so I believe this is the DM side. Whoopsie. This is the player side. So this is the kind of thing that you can hand out to your players. There's some locations labeled on here, but not all of them, especially not ones that have to do with the storyline. Uh, so yeah, I love this. I love this because you can, you know, like I said, you can give this out as a handout and people can get to know uh, everything uh, uh, and make it feel like that is their city uh, for sure. And then you can use that as a reference, obviously, for all of the uh, adventure locations that are happening. And I just realized you probably weren't able to see uh, anything. Yeah, blanket map time. That's the time. Uh, so I love how oversized this is. I can't even fit it onto the frame. That's how big it is. But each copy of Waterdeep Dragon Heist has has that in it. Uh, and, uh, and I love it. So you'll be able to uh, take a look at that as well. Um, one other thing, and, I, and obviously uh, Matt Mercer uh, was able to uh, show it off a little bit on Twitter, uh, but he is depicted along with all kinds of crazy characters in an image uh, that shows off the denizens of the Yawning Portal. And uh, this is a, a cool shout out to everybody who kind of understands what's going on in uh, Dungeons and Dragons lore. Anybody that you might have known or seen is uh, shown as being a part of there. Most of them are Forgotten Realms characters, um, but a good portion of them are... Um, not a good portion. I'd say there's one or two surprises. Oh, and here's the actual image that I wanted to show you without the uh, the, the key on it. Um, but that's it. Isn't it very sweet? Uh, I love it. This is Jason Thompson is the artist who created this. You might recognize his art style from the uh, Dragon Plus uh, images that he does for each one of our adventures. Kind of a flow chart, mostly tongue-in-cheek and comedically how a hapless party might befall all kinds of dangers with in the adventure, uh, but he decided to take this cross section of the Yawning Portal and show off uh, all a bunch of characters within there, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, and I, as I said, uh, there's a few real world uh, people on here. Uh, there's also a bunch of characters from uh, Force Grey, uh, for example. So there's uh, uh, Calliope, as well as Arkin, um, and there's even a table with our friends from Dice Camera Action uh, depicted within it. Uh, I think this one is, is the table right here. Um, and uh, there's three members there, and you're like, oh, where is the fourth one? And that's because there is a cool table of bards uh, that are performing right here uh, in this area. So I believe that is where Paulton is. Good stuff, huh? Uh, so Waterdeep Dragon Heist will be available in stores 
in game stores rather on Friday. That's right. You'll all be able to pick up a copy in your local game store on Friday. It'll be available everywhere else on September 18th. Uh, I think I saw a question in here about a uh, wet or dry erase on the large map, and it is not. I'm going to tell you it is a an actual map. It's just printed on paper, uh, but you can take the image there and uh, transpose it onto something. Um, yeah. Did you say I'm showing off the book so well with a book blocking itself? Yeah, that's that's the, the danger of being a dungeon master, isn't it? That you think you can just open up the book and it's so great and everybody can see it, uh, and then having the lights shine on it and uh, bounce off of it. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I, uh, I more power to you there. Eventually, we'll do this better with having uh, more digital uh, things uh, prepped ahead of time to be able to show it to you that way. Uh, but yeah, any other questions about the the book as as it's uh, as it's happening? No, nothing. Anybody? Um, yes, Gale Force Nine. I think will have a vinyl version of the map. I think that is true. So if you if that is something you're interested in, uh, you can totally check that out as well. Uh, dust off the overhead projector. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I know. I should I should definitely prep with better uh, art uh, ahead of time. And now that I have an entire hour to talk at you guys, I will definitely be doing that more. Monsters art. Yeah. Well, this book doesn't. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It does not have a ton of monster art in it, because the focus of this book is on the city and uh, how it looks and feels and how do you you're, you use that in your adventures. But that is something that we will do more of going forward uh, with other and better and different um, monsters for you to throw at your play alls. I am opening up all of these images while you can't see it. Just so you know, uh, that's what I'm doing. If you can hear some clickies and some clickies, that's what's happening. I should have done this ahead of time, but I'm doing it now. Ragamuffins. Yeah, did you guys see? We showed off some of that artwork during Dragon Plus uh, last week. Uh, actually, I guess we recorded that two weekends ago. That was October 27th when we recorded that. Uh, so go check that out on the YouTube if you're interested in seeing uh, a better, higher resolution version of all of those things. Will it be up on uh, D&D Beyond? I believe that is the plan. We had Todd Kenrick in the office uh, just a little while ago. Uh, I should have asked him uh, point blank if that is going to happen, but I believe that is the plan uh, for D&D Beyond to be able to have that content available on uh, Friday. Yes, indeed. Gosh, I didn't realize I had so many images here to show you, but I do. I got lots of images. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Ba -ba -bum. All right. Uh, yes, everyone's saying yes, 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 yes. So confirmed. It's really happening. Ooh, I like what Zenark just said in here where he said, uh, we don't have a lot of uh, art of the humans because uh, uh, humans are the greatest monsters. And we don't have a lot of monster art in, in uh, uh, Dragon High, uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist because humans are the most dangerous game. And that, and that is true. I cannot, I cannot deny or confirm that. I mean, I guess I can kind of confirm that. Uh, all right. Uh, so I have some other fun stuff that I wanted to show off to P. Oh, come on. Honestly, here I try to do this ahead of time, and it's not working. All right, so I'm going to have to close some of these things, I think, so that I can make this easier for me to see and for me to poop on. Uh, can I say that? Can I say that on the stream? I don't know. <laughs> yes, the human is challenge rating 20. Uh, have you seen the miniatures? Well, yes, I have. Uh, and in fact, you might see some uh, very soon because I have some fun stuff to show you um, on that front. You ready? You all ready for this? Burner. Because I might open it up for you so that you can check it. Oh, this is, this is just driving me mad. Uh, so again, I'm trying to get this ready to go, but it is not my uh, not cooperating for me. Basically, what I've done in the past is uh, is not working, so I'm I'm uh, improvising. But that's what you get when you get a whole hour uh, hour uh, of, of Greg Tito's. You get me uh, uh, making things happen. Yes, Sean, save me. That's right. And I did I did drop a triumph re a reference there. Thank you, thank you, Lauren, for that. Hmm. Alrighty, uh, so someone mentioned the uh, uh, minis, so I'm going to jump to talking about those because they're awesome and are available in stores now. Uh, so this is the 
Icons of the Realms, Water Deep Dragon Heist, 44 figures that you can possibly get in a blind box like this from our friends at WizKids. They are all out there now. Um, and uh, I think it's always fun to kind of open up and see what you get when you open up one of these. So let's see, let's see what happens. Let's see if I get something super, super neat. I always get something super neat. <laughs> right, cool. That's a good point. You have to, you have to really be investing in an entire hour of everything I've got to talk about. Ooh. So I like what they're doing with the, with the miniatures uh, for uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and that is giving you things that you don't normally get. Uh, things that are a little bit more, I wouldn't say mundane, since the lion is definitely a crazy ass creature that could maul you in a second. Uh, but we don't have miniatures of these for a lot of uh, things that you would want in a normal city, you know, or at least a, uh, a well-populated city in the Forgotten Realms. And uh, so this lion is here for that. It's a large creature and you can use it uh, if you have any kind of big cat in your game uh, and throw it out there. Last time I opened these up, we opened up a merchant mini, which I thought did the exactly the, the very similar thing. Uh, so, so that works for me. Check it. I'll put it over here because apparently I have lots of dead space over here since that was taken away from me over there. All right. So what else did I get in here? This little uh, blind box. I think it's a little floaty guy. Let's see what it is. Oh, yes. It is a Varguil. Whoa, which is a vampire head with uh, little flying wings coming at you. Check that out. Creepy. Bum, bum, bum. I like that. I like uh, uh, miniatures of little flying things because uh, my girls. My girls like little flying things, and that is definitely one of them. All right, what else did I get here? Two more in this blind box. Oh, yeah. Check this out. Uh, looks like I'm only getting a couple in here. Um, so this is a Cambian Devil. Bum, bum, bum. Check that out. I love the red wings with the yellow sword coming out. Uh, very cool. Looks like it got separated from the base uh, a little bit, but a little super cool. We'll put that right back on. Uh, I like that guy a lot as well. Very creepy. Yes, now they get Dumbo ears. That's right. You never know what's going to happen uh, with uh, monsters. Awesome. Cool. Well, that's uh, that's what we got with that one. I have another blind box, and if you guys are interested, I might open that up later on as well. Uh, some other fun things. Uh, that, uh, you know, again, these are in-game stores now. You'll be able to figure them out. Uh, figure them out. You'll be able to see them uh, when they go uh, uh, in your game stores, so you can yeah, figure out how to get all of them. Uh, I know there were some awesome characters in there, including Bolo from Bolo's Guide to Monsters. He plays a part in Waterdeep Dragon Heist, and now there's a miniature of him. Uh, so yeah, check those out when you go and uh, look for your copy of Dragon Heist. One other thing I want to make sure I mention is uh, the ABCs of D&D. &D. If we could throw the image on the uh, top right up when we get a chance, that'd be awesome. Uh, this is, oh yeah, there we go, look, it's a cover. Sweet. Oh, but you gotta take off the top chrome there. Uh, this book is uh, written uh, by Mr. Ivan Van Norman, the amazing person uh, who did the dungeon mastering for our off the table sessions uh, of uh, the stream of many eyes. He's a fixture at Geek and Sundry. He's done tons of stuff there and he created this book um, to uh, along with Caleb Cleveland, who is an artist and uh, uh, also an author. And uh, they, they, they're amazing. They are these little rhyming couplets getting people into uh, what's happening with Dungeons and Dragons. And uh, he's not only doing this one, but we also have a uh, one, two, threes of D&D &D coming out as well. Dun, dun, dun! Which I am very excited about getting these for my uh, kids to let them, you know. It, uh, basically, my, my, my reading to my kids is in two camps. One is one that I like to read, something that's fun, it's got rhyming couplets, something that uh, uh, is, is just a joy to perform. The other ones are not. And I'm pretty sure these would be formally in the first camp of ones that adults would like to read to their kids. Not only, you know, for D&D fans, all as spreading the love to their progeny, which is always a thing that we love to do, uh, but because it's fun to read. And it's done by a good uh, writer who understands poetry and cadence and all that kind of stuff. So uh, having looked at a few of the galleys of these, 
these uh, books are both in that vein. Plus, also, you know, if, if you're in that uh, realm of teaching kids, you're you're learning uh, about uh, ABCs and one, two, threes as well. My little girl is going into kindergarten for the first time. Uh, gosh, in about a week. And uh, so, yeah, the, the numbers and letters are things that are on board for that. You know what I mean? Although, I mean, she had that through preschool and stuff, but now she's going to have to use those to uh, get to learn how to read, and I, I'm excited about that. Guys, Dice Camera Action, uh, episode 108, I believe, is coming in just 30 minutes. Those of you who are, are tuning in now, this is an extra long, hour-long Dungeons & Dragons news segment warming up what's happening in this channel for the next episode of Dice Camera Action, uh, which is going to be awesome. All four cast members are live in the studio with Chris Perkins himself. They were here for PAX West 2018, and uh, they will be here, uh, not in costume, but they will be, uh, be able to rift off each other in live. But we also, of course, have... Um, uh, a guest, Mr. Sam Sykes, is returning, uh, which is pretty exciting as well. So, uh, speaking of packs, I want to show you guys this. Uh, uh, we had a nice little uh, soiree at the uh, Mox Boarding House in Ballard, uh, which we really, really enjoyed. Uh, we got to meet up with a whole bunch of people from the streaming community. Some of them we had seen from the stream of many eyes. Some of them uh, were uh, folks that I had never met before. Uh, so you can see some of them depicted here. And then of course there were lots of these mugs for everyone to take home. So apologies to everyone out there who does not yet have a mug like this. We will be doing more and more giveaways for, for getting those mugs out there. Uh, but this was also the, the few times I was able to have a physical copy of Dragon Heist to be able to show off to people ahead of when it was going to be in their hands. Uh, so people were super jazzed about that. PAX West was fun for all of those involved, and I wanted to make sure, uh, yes, you guys got to see this too. Bum, bum, bum. This was an awesome image uh, from the Penny Arcade uh, Acquisitions Incorporated show. It's always mind-boggling to me just how many thousands of fans can fit into the Benna Royal Hall in Seattle at just to watch these, you know, crazy kooks play Dungeons and & Dragons, and uh, it's been a long time with this cast. Holly Conrad did an amazing job, uh, once again, as Strix. Uh, Mike Rahulik uh, has got an extra special costume. I have not seen his updated costume there uh, in a while, and uh, I love Mr. Chris Perkins as Jarl Axel, Patrick Rothfuss uh, as Viari, and, of course, Jerry Holkins as Omen Drawn, also with a new costume. Gosh, I hadn't seen that. All I remember was the big breastplate, so I'm glad that they... Uh, got to show off their new duds in front of uh, all three, you know, thousands of screaming fans. Some pretty cool stuff. Mm hmm. Did you guys get to watch it live uh, by any chance here on? We had it, I think, on the uh, uh, twitch.tv slash DND channel here, uh, hosted from the Penny Arcade channel. They will be putting that up on uh, video on demand pretty soon, I'm sure, but it usually takes a few days to make sure all of uh, the video, it's a it's a sizable video, uh, is is able to be viewed without any hiccups or anything like that. So they usually wanna make sure that that is, is good to go. But yeah, uh, I enjoyed it. I was actually up here making sure people were getting seated in such a way as to uh, be very happy. And, uh, and, and, and they were, there was a lot of excitement. I mean, you can even see all everybody in the background uh, screaming and laughing. So uh, uh, kudos to everyone involved in putting this together. Uh, my friend Alyssa Grant, uh, who is, you might remember, she was in Out of the Abyss Live when I ran that on this channel show three years ago, two and a half years ago. It might be actually three years ago. Yeah, no, it was 2015. Yikes. Uh, she is instrumental in putting together this live show. So uh, kudos to her and uh, all of the uh, amazingness that went on. So cool. Just want to make sure we were highlighting that for all of you fun folks out there. Um, let's let's talk about this because you get to see it. Uh, so uh, Rick and Morty, the Dungeons and Dragons uh, uh, crossover comic. I have a whole bunch of copies here that I wanted to show you, but I wanted to shout out to Newsweek. Shout out Newsweek. Um, when did you ever think I was going to do that on D and D News? But they ran this amazing uh, spread all about how. Uh, Rick and Morty's character has a um, character sheet on it, and uh, this is the one, uh, that right there. So uh, this is a very large amount of special covers. I guess they anticipated there being a lot 
of excitement for a Dungeons and Dragons Rick and Morty crossover. You can see on the back cover here all of the different special covers that are available with this. Um, but it is a fantastic book. Um, it's it's rife with uh, references both to Dungeons and Dragons and to Rick and Morty. So fans of both uh, will be extremely excited. It feels like a big hefty, you know, almost, what is it? How many pages is it? I'm, I can actually tell you because I'm, I'm actually here. Uh, so the actual pages of the story itself are, oh, they don't number pages on, uh, on comic books? Showing my non-comic book knowledge. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, 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 got, it, it's got a lot into it, uh, uh, which is great. And I want to show you some of the other fun covers because I have uh, them here. So this one's a shiny one. It actually reminded me a lot of uh, uh, the red box, obviously, but it you know, kind of calls back a little bit what's going on in this t-shirt. Very fancy. Um, this one uh, feels like they're you know, right pulled from uh, playing a, in a tavern, uh, which is super cool. Um, this one definitely feels like it's calling back to uh, old school uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, Dungeon Master's Guide cover uh, with the pulling out of the eye. There you go on that one. And then of course this is the standard cover. I, I keep doing this wrong and putting this in the wrong place. Uh, which is why it's better to have the uh, thing going on there. But anywho, uh, oh, and there, see, I'm doing it wrong again. I want it to be over. Oh, no, I did it right. I switched hands. There it is. Ba bum, bum, bum. It was, you know, I'm doing it wrong again. All right. Uh, oh, uh, 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 uh. All right. I'm looking at myself on a delay, uh, so that's why I'm terrible at, at this. At this, so my bad there. Uh, but again, shout out to uh, Newsweek for putting this uh, together. I thought it was a great send up of uh, everything that uh, this crossover is all about. If you wanted to learn more about what's happening uh, with this, uh, Satine Phoenix did an awesome roundtable discussion uh, with Pat Rothfuss, uh, Jim Zub, um, and Troy Little. Uh, the artist who was working on this, uh, oh gosh, when was that? It was so two Fridays ago, and uh, it's great. They they just talked about everything that's going on there, and I really enjoyed it. So uh, check that out if you want to learn more about it, or head over to your comic book store and pick this up while you can. Uh, cool. All right. So uh, I feel like I have to keep uh, uh, making this smaller so that you guys can't see everything that I'm doing. Or, or not. Maybe I'll just pick up something and see what that is. What do you, what do you guys think I'm going to talk about next? -na 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 -na. -na 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 -na. What do you guys think about? It is the Core Rulebook gift set. That's right. This is designed by uh, Hydro74, uh, who did the Bolo's Guide to Monsters, as well as the Xanathar's Guide to Everything. The alt covers, as Elwaria says. That is right. Uh, there are no alt covers for Waterdeep Dragon Heist, just so you know. Um, but this one is the back cover of the alternate gift set edition of the Dungeon Master's Guide. It's purple, uh, as you can tell. Uh, 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 this is the back cover of the... Can you guess? The Monster Manual. That's right. This is the Monster Manual uh, back cover as designed by Xanathar's... Uh, uh, Xanathar's as designed by Hydro74. This is the front cover of the Player's Handbook. As you can see, King Schnurr uh, is there in all of his glory. Uh, oh, and then, yeah, of course, Water, I went to the manage. We'll get to that one, but I wanna make sure you guys saw all of these. This is what all of them look like uh, together. I am a big fan also, personally, of the uh, slip cover there. Oh, and those are the regular ones. Uh, and then the um, this Dungeon Master's screen I think looks exquisite and I can't wait for that to uh, be on my table uh, you know going forward so good stuff about this I know sorry Mew Fantasy that uh, we yeah, I, I knew there was gonna be some sadness about oh everyone just got them all but now not so much um, this uh, there's two versions there's this one uh, that you can get in game stores only uh, and then there is the core set uh, kind of refresh that you can get uh, everywhere and uh, it comes in a nice a slip cover. A little, a little touches, a little bit more um, graphic uh, updates for the original ones, but nothing much else than that. And so uh, these will be available um, on October 30th. Uh, and then I believe the others will be available after that. I'm sorry, the no, the the D&D the core rules. Um, 
You know what I'm trying to say. Uh, the alternate covers will be available uh, a, a week or so before that in game stores. I'm trying to open up this link and it's not working. So uh, I, you'll, you'll never be able to find out. You'll never know. Uh, 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 I'm sure Lauren is already doing it uh, in there for you to see. Is she? Use shortcut keys, this tells me. I'm like, that's what I thought I was doing. Control C. Uh, use shortcuts, kids, if you can. There you go. Core rulebook gift set, uh, as Lauren put in there. I just want to make, I always get this, this number, yes. So uh, October 19th, the alternate editions will be available. So uh, that is that is a whole 11 days earlier uh, than the other sets, So which, which follows uh, along on how we normally do things around these parts. So uh, I'm going to skip ahead to the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, so this book is being heavily worked on right about now. It is going to be available um, November 2nd, all in game stores, uh, and uh, November 13th, everywhere else. It has a whole bunch of information about Undermountain. What is happening below the city of Waterdeep uh, that the Waterdeep Dragon High story takes place in. It's a nice jumping off point if you play through levels one through five uh, as Waterdeep Dragon Heist will take you. These uh, will, it, it, it's a perfect transition into doing more high level uh, stuff. There's, there's a lot more going on uh, in, in Dungeon of the Mad Mage for the high level play. Uh, all the way up to level 20 uh, and beyond. So it's a great mega dungeon. Each one of the levels underneath, I think there's 23 levels of Undermountain feel very different and distinct. Um, a detail that I like about it is that there's lots of areas, while it's perfectly defined of what happens on uh, uh, the major portions of the levels, there's a lot that's undefined and that you can fill in as a dungeon master if you want. Oh, this is a portal that goes to the astral plane, or, or this just continues and uh, there's a faction of um, uh, slods that live under there for some reason. I don't know, but you can make it up and kind of very quickly patch it into what's happening in Undermounted because while it is mapped, for for our purposes, it is not a completely uh, uh, you know complete mapping of all that happens under under mountain under under mountain. I guess that would be the under dark, wouldn't it? Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Lots going on there, and uh, like I said, I, I think it's a perfect transition from playing what's cool about Waterdeep Dragon Heist into this Dungeon of the Mad Mage. So look for that coming pretty soon. There's also uh, oh there's those oh well there's that and I didn't want to show you that either. Secrets. Adventures Outlined is available right now. Uh, you can check this out in any game store that you possibly can. I've been talking about this as much as I can um, with folks here because I think it's a fantastic way to onboard fans, especially young ones and or new ones, into what's happening with the artwork of Dungeons and Dragons as well as the um, uh, creativity that is on display. So check that out. Uh, if you can, and uh, I also wanted to make sure I'm highlighting. Wait, no, not the Washington Post, although I did want to talk about that at another time. Where is it? Bustle. This is the one that I wanted to show you guys. So uh, I, I'm I'm not sure if many of you uh, check out Bustle, uh, but it is a um, uh, resource out there for a lot of young moms, and uh, I think it's great. And they were going through a list of 15 coloring books. Uh, that adults might love uh, and make them nostalgic for brands uh, in the past. There's a lot of great things on here, including uh, a coloring book from The Dark Crystal and a uh, coloring book of Shirt Tales. You guys remember that game, that show, Shirt Tales? I fucking love that show. Um, but this is, uh, I made a list. Uh, Adventures Outlined is one of the 15 that were out there, and uh, I think it's uh, amazing that Dungeons and Dragons can be in the same breath as uh, some of the uh, other amazing things that are out there for people to to decipher. So um, this is a nice little pull quote uh, as well for uh, why people might get excited into it. So we're really hoping that um, that that the Adventures Outline becomes a gateway for more and more people to uh, enjoy what's happening in the brand. So check that out if you can in game stores. Uh, what else did I want to tell you about? So. Uh, gosh, see, this is why I'm doing an hour because I hear I've just been blathering on and I only have 10 minutes left. I have still have a lot more to get to. And that's ridiculous. Uh, all right, so Extra Life 2018. You need to be involved in this because it is going to be so much fun. Uh, on November 3rd is when we're going to start this. 
From the Dungeons & Dragons offices, we are going to be playing three, probably four games of Dungeons & Dragons live. For your benefit, you can donate all kinds of things to the Wizards of the Coast page, uh, the Dungeons & Dragons team. And it all goes to support the kids uh, at Extra Life. We use the Seattle Children's Hospital as a donation you know, epicenter uh, for everything that we do. Um, but Extra Life benefits all uh, hospitals within the Children's Miracle Network. And we've been doing this for five years and it just keeps growing and growing and we want more and more of you at home to get involved. So if you're interested, go check out the Extra Life uh, page, um, join our team. Uh, start setting up a donations page. People can, you know, you can be really creative with it, but, you know, one of the suggestions is, you know, have people donate $30 to uh, the charity and then they get to add a he healing potion into the game. Donate 50 bucks and you can name one of the characters that one of your players is going to be playing. You know, donate uh, $100 and you can add a beholder into uh, any game that Dun Dungeon Master can use to take out his, his, uh, his players. It's super fun. I really enjoy it. Mike Merles is jumping in and trying to uh, outdo what he did last year uh, by uh, having four custom classes, subclasses that you can um, have designed for you by Mike Merles, and he will do so for a very small donation of $2,500. Uh, uh, as well, he's got a lot of other smaller uh, price points on there. $250, he'll create a custom DM screen that he's uh, crazy about and uh, is, is able to travel with, and that you can too. If you donate that amount of money, he will send it to you to your house, which I think is very cool. Um, but yeah, we're looking for more and more people at this stage to jump in and join the team, start programming how you're going to uh, present this out there. Again, we'll be doing it uh, starting on November 3rd and all that week, all the streaming that goes on here on uh, twitch.tv slash DND will be focused on raising money that week for Extra Life, at, culminating in a few live games at Game Hole Con from Wisconsin. So uh, if you're interested, if you've always wanted to do some streaming but never found a good excuse to do it, now is the chance. And it's super fun. I've done it for the last four years. I think Lauren uh, was my dungeon master. Uh, Oval Crazy was my dungeon master last year. Uh, she'll be doing some more fun stuff uh, connected to that this year, and uh, we can't wait. So uh, again, go to the Extra Life page to find out more, and uh, feel free to ping me at Greg Tito uh, or at Bart Carroll if you have any questions on Twitter uh, or any other way that you have uh, to get in touch with us. We want more and more people to be involved. So uh, jump on in and raise money for kids with Extra Life. It's for the kids. Sweet. Um, speaking of kids, Dragon Plus Issue 21 is out now. You can download it onto your phone. Or you can check out all that content on dragonmag.com. As I said, it's focused all on kids uh, taking the leaping off point of the ragamuffins or the uh, urchins that are depicted in the Waterdeep Dragon Heist book and uh, who some members of the Waffle Crew have played in previous sessions. Fun stuff there. There is great ways that people right now are using Dungeons & Dragons to connect with younger people, to connect with uh, people who have uh, disabilities, whether, uh, you know, through, uh, uh, you know, uh, not being able to see or not being able to hear or uh, having challenges in social situations. Dungeons & Dragons can help all of those kids as well as uh, those who have uh, really great imaginations uh, and uh, none of those lim lim limitations. So get out there, uh, get more people playing, and the, all, a lot of the articles and the content in Dragon Plus are focused on that. So if you're interested, go check it out. Again, you can download it onto your phone on uh, iOS or Android or check out that content at dragonmag.com. Uh, Dice Camera Action is going to be starting in just about 10 minutes. It's very cool. We have four live members of the Waffle Crew here in person playing with Chris Perkins in the studio. That's directly over there. Uh, so that's pretty exciting. We have our one guest, Sam Sykes, returning this week. He's going to be calling in via uh, video conferencing. And uh, I'm really excited for it. So uh, I, I always love it when the players are in the same room as a whole crazy dynamic. We usually do it you know, for one of our live shows or something like that. But now, since they were all in town for PAX West, we decided to do it uh, here in the office. And uh, the, it's been really exciting just being here in the office, having these amazing, uh, you know, not, I was going to say cosplayers. They're not cosplayers, so not all of them are. Uh, but role players here in the office, it's been great. So uh, I can't wait for you to stick around and start watching that in just about 10 minutes. Um, but I do have some more fun stuff that I want to tell you about, including Sirenscape uh, is uh, is a D&D uh, &D soundboard is the best way to say it. It's a way for you as a 
Dungeon Master to add sound effects and music into your game at the just the touch of a button or the touch of a screen. And uh, it's super intuitive. I've only really been playing with it the last couple of weeks, but I love it and I'm gonna start integrating it with all of my uh, Dungeon Mastered games going forward. Um, what's cool is that they are now uh, going to be releasing a Dragon Heist sound pack, or actually several Dragon Heist sound packs that were recorded from folks in the office themselves, uh, including Mr. Chris Perkins as Volo Thamp Gadarn. He has some quest text that he reads aloud. Mr. Chris Lindsay uh, did some amazing voice work uh, in a Scottish accent. Uh, Excuse me, um, you might even hear uh, Emi Tanji, one of the amazing artists uh, and uh, graphic designers who works on putting almost all of our D&D uh, &D books together. Uh, she does some great work as an orc, so I'll let you figure out exactly what she is saying and what it means uh, within it. But uh, it's super fun, and uh, you should check out Sirenscape if you haven't already. I used to spam those wizard spell Yeah, that's the way to do it. That's, the laser sounds are where it's at, Power Score RPG. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's move on to talking about our streaming schedule. This is one of my things that I was always not able to do when I was doing uh, only a half hour of this, and I'm, I'm struggling with getting to it even now. Um, but yes, we of course have episode 108 tonight uh, of the Dice Camera Action. Tomorrow we have... D&D Beyond, and we'll be hosting them. Uh, Adam Bradford and Todd Kennerick will be talking to a special guest, and this time it is, of course... Obo Crazy, uh, Miss Lauren Urban will be there as the special guest. She was recently announced as the new D&D Beyond Community Manager, and we couldn't be more happy for her. So congratulations to you, Lauren, and uh, we're excited to uh, you know, see your live stream tomorrow at uh, 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and, and see what, what all entails there. We have a special meeting at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time for something really uh, exciting going on. So we'll tell you more about that tomorrow, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, at 4 p.m. Uh, we have uh, tomorrow we have Actors Incorporated the C team uh, that is going to be super exciting to see where they jump off from and then on Thursday 10 a.m. Pacific time is Encounter Roleplay Learn to Play uh, with uh, Dungeon Master Will Jones and uh, Jay Tallsquall and who I owe one of these mugs to I know I'm sorry that I haven't been able to get one to you, but I will now. You've been very patient, and I think I'm just gonna have to send out monks to everyone and uh, make sure they're all happy. Yeah. Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms follows that at 1 p.m. Pacific time. Um, it, we, Dylan Wilkes or Chris Dupuy will be the folks there. Uh, I saw Dylan this weekend at PAX West, so I'm not sure if he will be back in time to host this or not, but if not, Chris Dupuy, our friend uh, from the D&D side, will be hosting as well, and you'll see all the latest goings on, including, oh, and that was another thing I wanted to show you guys, including all of the fun stuff that was going on in the uh, Idol Champions booth at PAX West. Uh, so you got to see a lot of the the uh, Waffle Crew are now all joining. All of their characters are now available uh, in Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. They did a uh, fantastic signing, a couple of signings during PAX West, and this was just a, a, you know, a group of a shot of them that I thought was very cool and showed off how excited uh, they were to meet fans and get in touch with, uh, with all of them. Uh, so all the Waffle Crew are available. Um, they join a lot of other characters such as Arkin, uh, from uh, Joe Manganiello's character from Force Gray, Minsk and Boo, uh, as well as tons of others from uh, lore. You can send them out on adventures. They kill monsters, collect loot all in real time, and uh, there's a nice, great strategy envelopment there, so you're trying to figure out what, how to recruit the best party. Super fun uh, game available on Steam right now. I suggest you check it out, and you can start playing with some of your favorite characters, the Waffle Crew. Um, uh, I, actually, I don't know if all of them are available via events right now, but there's always mechanics that you can use to recruit them into your party, and uh, they will be doing more and more of those going forward, as the, as the case may be. Uh, you'll find out more about that during the Idol Champions live stream at 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Waffle Talk, we will be rebroadcasting that at 4 p.m. Pacific Time on Thursdays. And then Trapped in the Birdcage will return at 5 p.m. Pacific Time on Thursday. That's Dungeon Master Holly Conrad, who's right over there, uh, playing with a fantastic group of people, including Hadil Almasari, who uh, is just a wonderful person. And uh, I got to hang out with her at a couple of our events at PAX West. So uh, high five to Hadil there. 
Uh, we, of course, host Critical Role starting at 7 p.m. Pacific time. And then uh, Beamdog will take over at Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific time, talking about what's going on there with Neverwinter Nights. And then it's the return of spoilers and swag with Nathan Stewart and Kate Welch. Um, they will be giving away all kinds of fun stuff. That's the swag part of spoilers and swag, as well as answering all your questions about upcoming products or just any questions you have about Dungeons and Dragons in general. Nathan uh, is the director of Dungeons and Dragons, if you didn't know, and he is very forthcoming uh, with what he can tell you. So that is the chance for you to get all of your answers uh, at least cryptically answered. Questions cryptically answered. Yes, he will, he will do that for sure. That's at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Friday. Check it out while you can. Uh, excellent. So uh, nothing, I think, big going on this weekend here on uh, twitch.tv slash dnd. Shout out to Rivals of Waterdeep. They concluded their season one and uh, with a bang. Uh, Carlos Luna, the Dungeon Master, did a fantastic job wrapping up kind of emotional storytelling of all of their characters. Uh, I got to hang out with uh, Cicero Jackson as well as Tanya DePass uh, at PAX West, and uh, they're very excited about season two, which will begin on September 23rd. Uh, so now is a great chance to jump in and watch all 10 episodes of what happened in season one get caught up and hit the ground running when they begin again on September 23rd. Uh, same for Hell's Bells. They are off this weekend. I got to meet Mazmataz for the first time, which was amazing. Their costume uh, of the uh, Modron was choice. If you haven't seen it yet, go check out uh, at Mazmataz on Twitter. I'm sure she has pictures of uh, what she looked like or what they looked like on the uh, show floor for PAX West 2018. It was amazing. I, I really had a great uh, time talking with her. Can't wait to meet uh, with them more uh, over the course of, uh, I think they might be coming into the office, so I might be giving some high fives all around uh, to her, uh, them, and a lot of the other uh, uh, cast members of that group. So they are on uh, hiatus, as I said. They'll be back on September 16th uh, and finish the season up there. All right, I think that's all the things that are going on in D&D twitch.tv slash dnd this goings on i am going to sign off right about now and uh get ready for everything to begin with dice camera action episode one oh i'm gonna say eight is it eight it is eight uh it is going to be amazing with all of the waffle crew live in the studio next door and uh guest sam sykes author extraordinaire will be calling in and i can't wait to see all this happen so enjoy i'm greg tito i'm signing off bye bye One, two, three. You're off, Greg.